Hello everyone. Welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, in the series of complex permanent tissue, we will now learn about phloem, its structure and function. So, the learning objectives will be to state the features of complex permanent tissue, that is to have a quick recap and then describe the structural elements present in the phloem of a plant. Now, complex permanent tissue, we have already discussed in previous videos also that these are those tissues which are made up of many types of cells. The simple were made up of just single type of cell like parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. Here they are made up of many types of cells. They are mainly conducting tissues, xylem and phloem. The function of xylem is conducting water and the function of phloem is to conduct food. Now, food is synthesized by the process of photosynthesis in the leaves. Now, if there is no system to transport that food which is synthesized by leaf to different parts of the plant so that they also get energy to carry out the processes, then that food is a wasted. So, for that also there has to be certain transport system. So, phloem is that transport system. Clearly, you can see this is a celery stalk. In the corners are the found the vascular bundles or the vascular tissues. The xylem is found to the inner side and phloem is found towards the outer side. Now let us talk about phloem. The term phloem means bast. It was given by Negele. Now the function of phloem tissue is to transport food synthesized by leaves. What is the food synthesized by leaves? The food is the sugars that are synthesized, the amino acids, okay the micronutrients, all of these hormones, plant hormones, etc. also have to be transported to different parts of the plant and that is done by the phloem tissue. Now, it is also derived from meristematic tissue which is procambium. Phloem tissue, the transport is bidirectional. In case of xylem, it was unidirectional, that is just from bottom to top. But in case of leaves are also present at the lower parts of the plant, so from top to bottom and bottom to top both bidirectional transport of food happens. Now this is made up of mainly living cells. In case of xylem we saw three of the four cells were dead but here most of the cells are living. It is made up of four types of cells. The cells are sieve tube elements in case of angiosperms and sieve cells in case of gymnosperms, companion cells in case of angiosperms, albuminous cells in case of gymnosperms phloem fibers and phloem parenchyma. See the structure. It is complex, isn't it? See so many cells. The seed cells, the food storage cells, the companion cells. Together they have formed one unit and this is phloem. In longitudinal section also, you can see different types of cells which have joined together functioning as a unit to transport water, transport food. Now, first type of cell, the seed tube. Sieve tube is elongated, row-like cells placed one on top of the other longitudinally, right? The individual cells are called sieve tube members and together all of them combined and formed a particular channel which is known as sieve tube. Now, these sieve tubes, they are thin-walled cells. Thin-walled, they have a central vacuole but they do not have nucleus. Now, if they do not have nucleus, then how do they function? We will see in the upcoming slides. So, their transverse wall, clearly you can see in the diagram, this is the diagram of a sieve tube member and the transverse wall is oblique. You can see some pores, right? Those pores may be clumped together in one area and that area is known as sieve area. So, in the lateral walls of the sieve tube, sieve areas are present and these sieve-like pores form together a plate in the transverse wall. That plate is known as sieve plate. This is how a sieve plate of a sieve tube member looks like. When you see the longitudinal section also, you can see this is a sieve plate and this is a sieve tube element, right? The transverse wall is oblique. Now this sieve plate again like perforation plate can be simple which means a single sieve area is present or it can be multiple means many sieve areas have combined together. These are the areas, if pores are clumped together in an area, then it forms what? Sieve area. So, this is also a characteristic feature. Now, if we, we said that there is no nucleus. Now, if there is no nucleus, what is controlling its activity? Yes, it is the companion cell. So, there is a cell called companion cell which is joined together with the sieve tube cell through the connection known as plasmodesmata. 
So it is the nucleus of companion cell which is controlling the activity of sieve tube. Now protoplast of the sieve tube elements have a special type of protein which is known as P protein or phloem protein. Right? Now all of, we said that it is tube one on top of the other. So there is no wall in between. That is why they also form cell fusions or syncytes just like the vessels. Now in winters what happens is this sieve plate it gets clogged by an insoluble carbohydrate. That insoluble carbohydrate is known as callos. Now this callos gets dissolved in spring. Now in case of gymnosperms we said that sieve cells are present. Now how sieve cells are different from sieve tubes? They are narrow and elongated not tube like cells. All right, and in them sieve areas are not present, sieve plates are not present, simple pores are present, right? So there is no sieve plate in them, they just have pores in them. Now next are companion cells. I said that the companion cells are living cells, they have nucleus in them. So they are parenchymatous, thin walled, living cells, large nucleus is present, which controls the activity found absolutely at the site stuck to the sieve tube. See here in the diagram, this is a sieve tube element. Very closely you can see companion cell is stuck to it. In, long, in transverse section also, this is a sieve tube cell and companion cell close to it. So the nucleus is controlling the activity of sieve tube cell. So what is it doing? It is not actually doing the transport. It is simply helping sieve tube in transporting. So joined together by plasma dust matter, they assist the sieve tube in food transport. So they are helping the sieve tube. Now companion cell is a characteristic feature of angiosperms. In case of gymnosperms, the cells are called albuminous cells. Here albuminous cells are Strasburger cells. Now these cells are joined together. So they originate from a single mother cell, right? Companion cells originate from single mother cell. Now the next type of cells, phloem fibers, just like xylem fibers, they are sclerenchymatous, which means they are mechanical in function, right? And they are also known as bast fibers. Now some phloem fibers found on the outer side are dissolved, like in case of plants of jute and hemp, and they are utilized for commercial purposes. So these are the hemp fibers, which are sclerenchymatous, thick walled. Next is phloem parenchyma. Now it is also known as vast parenchyma. Cells are living, containing cytoplasm, nucleus, protoplasm is present. Their function is apart from food storage, radial conduction of water, right? Also they store different materials like resin, mucilage, latex, etc. Right? So they are also what? Living cells. So there is just one dead cell which is phloem fibers. Now they are generally formed during secondary growth and that is the reason the bast parenchyma is absent in monocots and herbaceous stems. You can see in the diagram this is the phloem parenchyma associated with the other three cells. So to summarize we can say phloem is a complex permanent tissue which is used for transport of food like sugars, amino acids, plant hormones etc from leaf to different parts of the plant. The flow is bidirectional and phloem is made up of four types of cells. The cells are sieve tube elements in case of gymnosperms and sieve cells in case of angiosperms. Companion cells in angiosperms and albuminous cells in gymnosperms. Similarly, phloem parenchyma, phloem fibers. Now what were sieve tube cells? Sieve tube cells were elongated, row-like cells placed on one top of another. Individual was called sieve tube element, individual cell. They did not have nucleus but they were thin walled and they have a central, central vacuum, right? They are associated with a companion cell. Companion cells nucleus helps in controlling the activity of sieve tube. So it assists in transport of the food. Now companion cells are thin walled living cells and they have a central nucleus. The phloem fibers are known as bast fibers also and they are used commercially also. Phloem parenchyma is living and it helps in radial conduction of water apart from the storage of food. So this is all about the phloem of a plant. Now in the upcoming videos, let us just have a gist of differentiation between both these tissues. Till then, thank you. Tutorialspoint.com Simply easy learning.